Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, SCS uh, Tech Seminar. Uh, my name is Andrew Chow. I'm a council member of uh, SCS Singapore Computer Society and your host for today. Right now, originally we planned for this seminar in the ballroom setting in the hotel at Amara, but unfortunately, uh, we cannot do that uh, because of the restriction. In fact, we are supposed to have a sumptuous lunch after the seminar. But never mind, I guess we can all imagine virtually that we are in a hotel setting now and the food in front of you, right? And we really hope that things will get better uh, and get to be a bit more normal uh, come this Sunday, right? Now, over the last two years, uh, SCS has been running, uh, has been working on this, uh, what I call the TESTA initiative, which is a tech skill accelerator with IAM, uh, IMDA, right? And one of the key projects that we have is really on this TAC engagement. That means our SCS engagement with the trade uh, chambers and association, TAC, right? And we started with, uh, with ACCA, the association for uh, chartered accountants, certified accountants. And also we work with IBF, Institute of Banking and Finance, SAL, Singapore Academy of Law, and also SMS, Singapore Manufacturing Federation. So jointly, we actually run many workshops, seminars over the last two years with the TAC members. And the, the whole purpose is really to, to bring tech to all the TAC uh, federations, friends, and uh, upskill, and also to reskill some of the workforce, right? And the whole purpose is really about business transformation. So we run workshops on design thinking, uh, analytics, uh, AI, RPA, cyber, future of work, etc. And of course, we get very good feedback and also very good encouragement from the TACs and also SES will continue to further this journey with the assisting and hopefully we will get more TAC to come on board in the next two years. Now today, uh, webinars is really very good topics because uh, we are talking about tech for business leadership how we can actually, uh, how do we drive innovations? How do we create values? How do we uh, transform our business? And how do we change mindset? And important thing is how do we use technology to achieve all this, right? Of course, uh, one of the things is that uh, technology is a, is a catalyst for change, but I also like to say that COVID-19 also help us to hasten the transformation and compress the time frame as we go about uh, uh, going forward with the new ideas, new business, and creating the new norms. So today, we actually have uh, two very eminent speakers. Uh, Mr. Lam Yang, uh, he's the Chief Executive for this uh, Singapore Business Federation, and Ms. Stephanie Davis, uh, Vice President of uh, Google Southeast Asia. And both of them will be sharing, right, how to use technologies and also to build capabilities to drive business transformation, right? And I'm sure you will learn and also get a lot of insights from both our speakers. Now, after the two, two speakers, there will be a Q&A. And, &A, and uh, please, uh, if you have any burning questions uh, you want to ask, please post it on the Q&A panel uh, box and we will we'll bring forth the question to the uh, panelists, right? Now, before that, uh, let me just want to welcome uh, our SCS president, Dr. Chang Yok Sin, uh, to give her opening address. And uh, Yok Sin is really a veteran uh, in the ICT industry, and she's very, uh, very has a very strong passion, and she's a really a strong advocate for the ICT industry and also driving the ICT profession, right? So being the president of SES, I think it's really her full-time job, although she's a volunteer, right? So Yoxin, please, over to you. Well, thank you, uh, Andrew, for bringing the liveliness to this whole uh, event, right? Even though we have to do it, unfortunately, um, over the web. So very good morning and welcome to our SES members and friends from the uh, Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, the Institute of Banking and Finance, Singapore Academy of Law, 
and the Singapore Logistics Association and our Singapore Manufacturing uh, Federation. So thank you for joining us at this uh, Tech for Business Leadership Seminar. And we're, high, we're really heartened that so many of you from these industries that are embracing tech um, are also with us uh, this morning. We are honored to have, um, as Andrew mentioned, right with us, uh, Mr. Lam Yi Yang, the CEO of SBF, and Ms. Stephanie Davis, VP of uh, Google Southeast Asia. And uh, Stephanie is also an SDS Exco member. So with this powerful combination of the best of business and tech, we will have the privilege of hearing firsthand what businesses will need to do to survive in this age of transformation and the views of a leading tech firm with solutions for businesses and the individuals. So COVID-19, as we know, has forced every business to use tech as a tool for survival. And we are already in the second year of the pandemic and our tech skills have certainly been honed from working from home with the tools like Zoom, you know, Google Hangouts, um, Microsoft Teams, right? WhatsApps, you know, email, Excel, PowerPoint, you name it. And also the newer tools of analytics and RPA, robotics for automation. And even now, right, as we speak, Google is a verb, has become a verb. So going forward, every professional will have to have substantial tech skills to survive and thrive, right, in their profession, even though it is outside of tech. So since 2019, SES has been working collaboratively with our affiliate associations that uh, was named just now to enhance the digital skills of professionals in these tech interest groups. And uh, this initiative is supported, as Andrew mentioned um, just now, right, uh, in detail. So it is supported by IMDA and aligned with IMDA's TESA program for SES so that we could actually reach uh, out to um, non-tech uh, industries so we could also provide resources and tech programs to professionals across various sectors to deepen the digital skills of our workforce and broaden awareness of deployable disruptive technologies. So SES has exciting chapters. Um, Andrew actually uh, alluded, alluded to this. Uh, we have uh, SIGs or special interest groups, committees across a broad spectrum of ICT topics from artificial intelligence, analytics, cybersecurity, cloud, IoT, agile, entrepreneurship, even um, governance, ethics, right, uh, in AI, as well as events and networking sessions. So this collaboration will tap on SES resources and expertise through our members, advisors, and partners to provide a vibrant community for learning and idea development in this age of digital trans, uh, transformation and digital disruption. So if you are a member of the ACCA, IBF, SAL, SLA, and SMF, I strongly encourage you to be a part of the tech interest group, which has been set up in your various uh, associations and participate in the upcoming curated events that will help you to stay in tune with the latest tech developments and trends in order to stay ahead of the technological curve. So it leaves me to next, um, you know, hand the, uh, Mike, back to uh, Andrew, and I wish you a great event ahead. Thank you. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks. Thanks, Yoxi, for giving the welcome uh, address. Now, next is really my pleasure to invite Mr. Lam Yi Yang. Uh, Yi Yang is the CEO of Singapore Business Federation, and he will share about how to drive digital, digitalization across the different industry sector. Now, Yi Yang actually led SPF as a CEO since January this year. And as you all know, SPF is really the mother of all business chamber, right? They are championing the business community, right? In all aspects from the, how we build up, how we, how we invest and how we develop it as a Singapore Inc., right? Yang has spent many years uh, in senior leadership position in the Singapore Civil Service. And his last position was the Deputy Secretary for industry in the Ministry of Trade and Industry. So over to you, Ian. Thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, first I'd like to thank Dr. Chong Yok Sing and SDS for inviting me to speak at today's uh, event. And I think given the, the audience we have today, I'm sure I'm speaking to the converted when it comes to the importance of digitalization, especially during this period 
where digitalization is very much about supporting the survival, recovery, and growth of businesses in Singapore and actually around the world as well. So today I thought I will talk a bit more about the how, how we can work together to help our companies, particularly our SMEs with digitalization, and also to help them reap the benefits and to seize the opportunities that can come with digitalization. And by we, I mean government agencies like IMDA, trade associations and chambers like the Singapore Business Federation, professional bodies like SPS and your members, as well as uh, companies and individuals with the tech expertise. Perhaps uh, if you allow me, uh, I should start off by giving a quick introduction to Singapore Business Federation or SPF. SPF is a registered society. We are made up of around 27,000 member companies. All companies in Singapore with paid up capital of half a million dollars and above are our members. And in terms of a company size, about 80% of our members are SMEs based on their revenue and employment size. SBF, uh, we look at ourselves as playing three key roles uh, in terms of how we help our members uh, as a bridge, as the facilitator, as an enabler. Let me first talk about the bridge. We act as the bridge between government and companies. So we help to understand what our members, what companies in Singapore need, and we help to advocate and lobby the government for uh, whether is it for certain policy changes or for certain assistance schemes. Uh, but this bridge function is two ways. We also play a role in helping to understand government policies and in helping to communicate and explain it to our members and to the larger business community in Singapore. Second is facilitator. As a facilitator, we help our members and companies uh, in terms of their growth and in terms of uh, or this period in terms of their recovery. So we help them in various areas on a one-to-one -one basis uh, to help them to grow their business uh, and to do better in their business. The third area, the third key role is enabler, where we look at ourselves playing a role in building a community among the businesses in Singapore. This involves uh, working with trade associations for different trade associations and chambers to come together so that we can better synergize our efforts in helping the business community. It's also about bringing companies together. So part of our work, we, we work with different SMEs. We bring them together to work with each other so that they can build an ecosystem and together they can have the skill and also the, uh, the greater expertise uh, to be able to do better, especially when they go overseas. The third part of the enabler is also looking at how can we bring big companies, the larger companies with the expertise, with the capabilities, to work with and help our SMEs uh, in, their, in their growth journey. So that's the three key roles. And through this, uh, we do this through our three strategic pillars, the three key work areas. The first is internationalization, helping our companies, particularly SMEs, to venture outside of Singapore. I think we all know that the, the market size in Singapore is limited and for our companies to grow, they do need to go outside of Singapore. So we do quite a bit in helping our companies to go into the uh, our region. Uh, ASEAN is a big market, but we also work beyond it to North Asia, South Asia, uh, as well as the rest of the world. So this involves helping our uh, companies to strike deals. Uh, it could be in terms of selling their products to these markets or buying things from these markets, uh, all the way to having presence in the market, uh, lending in those markets, and over time localizing and growing in the overseas market. The second key pillar is digitalization and transformation, which is very relevant to what we are discussing here today. How do we help companies to adopt digital technology? How do we help them to transform their operations to become more effective, more productive, and to be able to do better uh, and grow as a business? And the third strategic pillar is uh, jobs and skills. Uh, relatively new to, to SBF, but I think the, the COVID pandemic has put a lot more importance on helping companies in terms of uh, redesigning their jobs, uh, keeping their workers, reskilling their workers, uh, saving jobs and saving uh, uh, the, the skill sets and keeping them in Singapore. So we do quite a number of things in terms of jobs and skills. We are also the government's agent to implement uh, schemes like the SG United Traineeship Program, the SG United Mid-Career Pathway Program, uh, and the earlier ones, uh, the SG United Jobs uh, Initiative. 
to help uh, match displaced foreign workers to, to new employers. So that's our three strategic pillars of which digitalization is uh, very much a key part of our work. And for this, we have a digitalization committee to help us to steer our work in this area. And the committee has representatives from key trade associations and chambers, uh, including the likes of SG Tech, the Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, Singapore Retailers Association, Singapore's Manufacturing Federation, the Association of Banks, and so on. And as part of our work on digitalization, um, we've been at it for, for, for quite a number of years. We have seen both good news and uh, bad news. I thought today I would like to share two of the good news that we, that we see, two bad news, as well as two ways that I believe we can all work together to better support SMEs in their digitalization journey. Um, I think I'll start with the, the good news. The first good news is that COVID-19 pandemic has given a big push for digitalization. You've seen and Andrew mentioned this as well. Companies have greatly accelerated the adoption of tech, of tech solutions to keep their businesses going. And for many companies, uh, these tech solutions have been a lifesaver that allowed them to continue their business operations during the circuit breaker and also during this uh, current period of phase two heightened alert. Last uh, year, in our annual national business survey that we conducted in October and November, 84% of businesses reported that COVID-19 has accelerated their digital transformation by an average of two years. Uh, this is a very encouraging sign. And what was more encouraging is that this high level of acceleration of digital transformation was not just among the large companies, but also among the SMEs. So the SMEs also had an equally high percentage of uh, companies reporting that they have accelerated their digital transformation. In terms of what this means, of course, it means different things for different companies. Uh, but in our survey, the top two digitalization steps taken by companies were the adoption of collaborative technologies and tools to increase productivity, as well as technology to streamline operations and automate processes. Uh, I think this is a sign that uh, during the circuit breaker, many companies had to adopt to, to new ways of working, uh, through, be it through Zoom, through Teams, uh, through various uh, collaborative tools that allow them to continue working while many workers are working from home. And uh, there were also uh, adoption of technology in terms of like for the uh, retail side will be greater leveraging on e-commerce, using the e-commerce platform. Uh, food companies have to go more into doing uh, uh, online orders and delivery in order to keep the business going. So the encouraging thing is that this uh, acceleration of digitalization will help companies not just with near-term challenges, but can also position them better for recovery and growth moving ahead. And for this, uh, what is encouraging is that the findings from the IMDA's Digital Acceleration Index show that 63% of companies who had improved their digitalization scores between 2019 and, 2019 and 2020 saw an increase in revenue last year despite the pandemic. I think it's a good sign that uh, with digitalization, companies uh, can uh, seize opportunities and can see, uh, help themselves in terms of growing their business and growing their revenue. So that's the first good news. The second good news is that there are many schemes available to help SMEs with digitization from different government agencies, uh, including IMDA, ESG, WSG, and SSG. Uh, I'm sure we are all familiar with schemes like the SME Go Digital, Start Digital, Grow Digital, the Productivity Solutions Grants, the Enterprise Development Grants, uh, support for e-commerce, uh, schemes like the Industry 4.0 Human Capital Initiatives, and so on. So many, many schemes, uh, and definitely no lack of support and grant schemes for SMEs to tap on uh, in their transformation and digitalization journey. So that's the two good news. More companies are building and are adopting digitization and uh, are transforming. And there are many support and grant schemes available to help SMEs in doing so. So, well, that's the good news. So maybe now let me move on to the, the two bad news, which are also interrelated. The first bad news is that there are many schemes available to help SMEs with digitization from different government agencies. So many that some SMEs have said that they find it confusing 
and are not sure about what schemes they should tap on and how they should go about uh, transforming and digitizing because there are just so many different schemes out there. And also many of the schemes are solution-centric, scheme-centric and agency-centric as opposed to being company-centric and needs-centric. SMEs have shared that they have been approached by different agencies and different service providers selling them various schemes and solutions based on the schemes and solutions rather than based on the needs of their company. Some SMEs have even shared that sometimes all these get them even more confused because they feel that they are being, they are, they are being sold different schemes that sometimes seems to conflict with each other. So uh, that's the first bad news. The second bad news is that many of our SMEs lack the tech skills and expertise to implement and make best use of digitalization. IMDA's uh, Digitalization Acceleration Index showed that only 38% of SMEs have reached digital literate stage compared to 78% of uh, large companies. This is of course not unexpected, uh, but what is more worrying is that our SMEs lag behind SMEs in other countries when it comes to digital literacy. So I think this is one area that we definitely can do a lot more in helping our SMEs to up their digital literacy. SMEs, particularly the smaller ones, often don't have the people and expertise to be able to look at their, their needs, what are the best fit solutions, and how best to integrate the solutions into their business operations to get the most out of their digitalization investments. We have seen examples of piecemeal adoption of various schemes and solutions that may not best fit the needs of the SMEs and may become quite elephant over time, or which do not integrate with other business operations or solutions in the companies or are not being used to their full potential to, to help the companies. And a key part of this, I think, is the challenge that SME face in attracting and retaining tech talent. Many SMEs have shared with us their challenges in attracting tech talent to join them and to help them. Uh, they have said that, well, pay is one key factor. Computer science graduates are now the highest paid among fresh graduates from this discipline from our university. And uh, SMEs have lamented how it is impossible to compete with the big tech companies like uh, Google, Facebook, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, they say that not just is it difficult to compete with the big tech companies, now they also have to compete with uh, the government in terms of GovTech. They are offering much higher wages, which SMEs feel that they are not able to compete with. So that's the two bad news. Many solution-centric schemes that SME needs to find their way around. And SMEs not having the tech capabilities and competencies to effectively digitalize. So lest I sound too pessimistic, let me hasten to add that the good news among these bad news is that we are actually well-placed to do something about the bad news and that we have the strong fundamentals in place in Singapore to be able to help our SMEs to improve and do better. And uh, that leads me to the two ways that we can work better together to help and support our SMEs in digitalization. The first is to move towards a company-centric approach in our support schemes, to start from the problems and needs rather than from the solutions and schemes. This will involve looking at the support schemes and solutions across different government agencies instead of looking at each scheme or agency in a silo. And uh, for me, having spent more than 20 years in the government, I can appreciate that this is not easy for the various schemes administrators in the government agencies to do, as they all have their own KPIs to manage and to answer for. So I believe this is where trade association and chambers like SPF can come in and play a facilitative role between the companies, especially the SMEs, and the different government agencies. At SBF, we have started using this company-centric approach in working with SMEs to help them first understand their challenges, their problems, their needs, before looking at the potential solutions and then linking up with them up with the possible assistance schemes and relevant government agencies. So one example is our new MAP initiative for the wholesale and retail trade sectors. Under this initiative, we help companies map out their transformation through a three-stage MAP process comprising M, mindset shift, A, analysis of potential, and P, pathway assignment. 
So through a systematic process, we try and guide the SMEs to address their specific concerns and to implement actionable steps such as using open innovation platforms and design thinking to find the right solutions and then link them up with the pathways and support schemes available to allow them to implement the solutions to address their specific needs. This is uh, not something that uh, SPF is doing alone. The initiative is a multi-agency collaboration and our partners in this uh, include GIC, Design Singapore, the Institute of HR Professionals, the Singapore Institute of Management, IMDA, SkillsFuture Singapore, Singapore Polytechnic, the Thought Collective, as well as uh, Confairy. I think it really does illustrate that it takes a village to, to help our SMEs. Uh, and we all need to work together across the, the government, uh, the private sector, the trade associations, in order to help our SMEs to be able to grow. Moving ahead, we are also adopting the same company-centric approach in our work as the Jobs Development Partner of the National Jobs Council, where we will reach out to and work with SMEs on their transformation journey and the resultant job redesign needed to support them in their transformation. So that's the first way. The second way that I believe we can help SMEs is through providing an ecosystem of tax expertise to support SMEs in their digitalization efforts. So I'm very happy that uh, SES, uh, to hear SES has, uh, uh, has various uh, initiatives where you have been working with trade associations to bring two people together in terms of uh, helping uh, uplift the tech capability of our workers and our companies. So in this aspect, the recently announced IMDA's uh, CTO as a service, I think is a good example and will be something helpful to SMEs uh, in being able to have a sort of a CTO as a shared service to help them meet their needs. But the needs of SMEs is great. And I believe that trade associations and chambers, professional bodies and tech companies and individual tech professionals can play a role in supplementing IMDA's efforts, maybe through the provision of tech mentorship and guidance to SMEs in their digitalization journey. This can take many forms. It could be through community of practices, CTO advisory services, or mentorship schemes and can involve contributions from both the larger companies with the expertise as well as individual professionals who are interested in sharing their expertise and helping to uplift our SMEs. Uh, the good thing is I've had a few senior professionals mention to me before their desire to give back to society by helping our SMEs and whether there are platforms and uh, uh, available for them to do so in an organized manner. So maybe just to leave a thought with you, would this be an area that SCS and its members uh, see yourself playing a role in organizing and bringing together like-minded members who are keen to make a difference by helping our SMEs? If so, SBF will be happy to see how we can work with SCS. We have the linkages to SMEs that may need help, and SCS has the links to the expertise through your members. I think, and in this effort, we can also rope in other partners like SG Tech and the other trade associations who understands the needs of the members in their specific sectors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, digitalization is, I think, no doubt critical for the recovery and growth of SMEs moving ahead. There are both good news and bad news about our current state, but we can all work together to help our SMEs, and this will in turn give a boost to Singapore's economic growth and through that enhanced quality of life for Singaporeans. So with that, uh, I will end here. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Ian. Thanks for sharing. Uh, we're very heartened to hear that you have this two plus two plus two, right? Two good way plus two good news plus two bad news plus two way to solve the problem. So I think uh, for our participants in the audience, uh, if you do have any uh, any questions for Ian, uh, please post the questions on the Q&A uh, box and we'll come back to that. Now next, uh, we'd like to bring on uh, Stephanie Davis. I think uh, she's the Vice President for Southeast Asia uh, for Google and she's also a council member of SCS. Right? Uh, Stephanie has been in Singapore for I think for the last five years and you often see her on televisions giving interviews and she really provides a lot of thought leaderships on the digital future, sharing very valuable insights on 
the digital economy and also the digital still needed to transform, right? So, but if you want to know more about Stephanie from Google, please Google her. <laughs> Stephanie, please. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, uh, Andrew. Uh, hello, everyone. I too was looking very forward to seeing you at the Amara Hotel, uh, but I'm hopeful that everyone is staying safe and healthy and appreciate that technology can keep us connected today. Uh, and thank you, Anna, for, for helping me with the slides. Uh, that was just such a great overview, particularly of the resources um, that are available to SMEs in Singapore. Let me see if I can provide a little bit of a framework for navigating the solutions uh, that are out there. And as you go to look for some of those resources, what could potentially be in mind as not just for you, but for the organizations uh, that you represent as well. So next slide, please, Anna. The world has changed. Digital has been important for quite some time. We know that but has already been mentioned, the pace of digital adoption that took place in the past year was actually projected to take place over the course of several years. And so the need for tech migration has been amplified dramatically. As also was discussed, people have been working from home, shopping from online, finding new forms of entertainment as they stay at home, and also employees, uh, all of us, have increased expectations around how we can be more productive when we're working remotely. And consumers also have greater expectations, expectations of a seamless digital experience. All of this has been amplified during COVID. And so yes, the world has changed. So we go to the next slide. With this change, digitalization should be at the heart of most all business decisions that are being made. As business leaders in this room, we've been talking about digitalization for years, and it was even referred to just a moment ago as talking to the converted. But not all of those in our organizations are necessarily converted, nor do they all necessarily believe that we need to be moving as fast as we need to. COVID's impact, though, has shown us that, again, digitalization should be at the heart of most of our business decisions and that we need to be moving at an even faster rate than we had previously assumed. And importantly, no industry is spared. Digitalization will shape competitive positioning across all industries and competitive uh, positioning for talent as well. And we just heard a good snippet on that too. So let's take at this, no matter what industry we're in, this beehive grid on the right side of the slide, if you will. And let's start at the top with distribution. Technology is allowing for the streamlining of logistics. It's allowing for the ability to capture growing demand in new channels. And so we need to be asking ourselves if we're in the business of distribution, how are we deploying tech and are we doing so fast enough? In category management, <clears throat> digital has shifted demand uh, during COVID. And so how do we adapt? How do we look at the products that are in demand now? Infrastructure, moving around the beehive. Our internal systems, no matter what industry we're in or what company we work for, they need to talk to one another. They need to share data with one another. And as mentioned earlier on talent, are leaders preparing the workforce for the digital world so they can compete? And are all of us also uh, learning as we need to? I, I have to learn every week. Sustainability, artificial intelligence can certainly inform it. Are we deploying it if it is a goal of our company? And then lastly, here is customer experience. They are nearly all online now, particularly in Singapore. And how does that change expectations, not just for the consumer online, but for everyone? So why do I say that? Let's look at just a few stats. Next slide. 33% of digital consumers are new to being consumers online. And when I say digital consumer, what I mean is that they are actually making a purchase online or they are subscribing to a service online and paying for it. So they're not just browsing or communicating. 
And according to the Southeast Asia Economy Report that Google conducted with Tamasek and Bain last year, more than one in every three digital service consumers, again, they're purchasing or subscribing, are new to doing so. And the reason they tell us that they're new is that they uh, came online due to COVID. And look at Singapore on the graph on the right. Even with the high internet connectivity rate in Singapore, almost a third of all new digital service consumers were first timers in 2020. But if we go to the next slide, the real story is in the stickiness that we can anticipate because nine out of 10 tell us that they plan to continue using a digital service going forward, consuming a digital service. So many tell us in Singapore that they came online because of COVID, but what they have found is helpfulness and efficiency. So students across the region were able to continue learning online. Doctors were able to start seeing patients online. Traditional retailers built digital storefronts. All of our living rooms became home theaters and the list goes on. So the ramp from discoverability to purchasing was quite rapid and efficiencies and helpfulness were found in the process. And so many plan to stay. On the next slide, I'm not sure that we need a Charles Darwin uh, quote to let us know how important adaptation is, but we will not be going back to the exact world that we lived in pre-pandemic. I know that that can be a challenging notion. It can be for me as well, but it should also be an exciting one. And exciting because we're witnessing the transformative power of technology. And getting to that framework that I was mentioning is we're all trying to navigate this need uh, to adopt technology. For us in this room, as business leaders, I think that there are three things for us to consider. The first is the opportunity that tech or digital can afford us, afford our companies and afford our industries. The second is realizing just how quickly we need to adapt and accelerate. And the third is that the transformation needed is necessary for everyone. So let's take a quick look at these three, starting on the next slide, which is opportunity. Again, for your framework, how do you think about technology and the new opportunities that it can bring? Let's take a look at just a few of those specific opportunities. The first I would like to highlight is tech affords us the opportunity to stay competitive. Technology has enabled a whole new sub-industry or sub-industries, but traditional players or incumbent players in the wider industries are not standing still. They shouldn't, and quite frankly, they can't. If we look at the banking industry, incumbent banks are facing competition from fintech from digital banks. And if we look at DBS as just one example of an incumbent not standing still, we can see that the bank has digitally transformed itself in a seven year journey since 2014. It has been named the world's best digital bank by Euro Money for the third year in a row. Those of us who may use DBS know that it has implemented solutions such as AI activated personal assistance as well as first of its kind video teller machines. So again, it's not just these new emerging industries such as FinTech, but if you are in an incumbent space, we also need to be thinking about and acting on tech. Let's take a look at the second opportunity on the next slide, which is around increasing productivity. Uh, I'm gonna use legal as an example. I am not an expert in this space. Uh, I know many of you are, uh, so bear with me. And I know you could also teach me an awful lot. Uh, but there was a study done in Singapore with a law society and 42% of respondents wanted to invest more in technology. And productivity was the primary reason that was given. And with greater productivity, lawyers felt that they could translate that into better service and faster turnaround. 
So tech solutions with advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, blockchain, all of these can reduce rote tasks and free up lawyers or employers in most any industry to do more valuable work. And just one example in this space is speech to text technology, uh, voice recognition. These things can help speed up real time transcription. And I work for a so-called tech company and we faced some of the same things. Our Salesforce is an example. When we started using machine learning for automation to automatically offer uh, clients the best solution and to optimize their campaigns, our sellers were nervous. What would it do to their jobs? But what they have discovered over the course of the last couple of years is that it frees them up to do more strategic things. Let's look at just one more opportunity on the next slide. And that is that tech affords us strengthened operational excellence. All of our companies have data that we rely on, but that data often sits in silos around the company. And many of us are not making the most or the best use of it. And our first party data can actually help us make much better, much quicker, smarter changes to our operations without having to rely on third parties. There are a couple of examples here, but I'm gonna highlight just one in Singapore, Portcast. They can now accurately forecast cargo demand and utility while predicting arrival times uh, using machine learning and weather patterns. And I think this is just one perfect example of all industries needing to lean into technology. So let's move to the next slide. And I'm going quickly in the interest of time. Uh, those were some opportunities that tech affords us. And we've heard now several reasons as to why we need to accelerate. And that is because with opportunity uh, and the need for acceleration, we can also feel overwhelmed. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done. And coming back to that framework uh, that I mentioned and was uh, shared with us before, lots of SMEs can feel like solutions are coming from every direction. Let me share three things um, that I, I think would be good to think about. Uh, those are going to be prioritizing tech for allowances and intelligence. The second is looking for tech that allows for openness and flexibility. And the third is looking for tech, and this was mentioned earlier, collaboration and productivity. Let's go to the next slide to look at intelligence. Uh, go on to the next one. Thanks. Technology can help uh, turn data into real insights. And that comes back to data lying at the core of any business transformation. Providing clear insights into customers and their evolving needs is important. And cloud technology with its machine learning and advanced analytics capabilities helps businesses unify that data across the entire organization to form AI-driven business insights for better real-time decisions. And there's one example here. Again, I think it just shows that all industries need to lean into tech and Ocean Network Express is one using cloud to unify all of its data. So it sits centralized and accessible by mul multiple orgs. This again is the intelligence that tech can afford. Let's move to the next slide to look at openness and flexibility. Openness and flexibility allows for your needs uh, and customization of your needs. Every company has different needs when it comes to technology. And off the shelf tech may absolutely work. And when it does, particularly for SMEs, that's wonderful. But there are a lot of times that off the tech uh, or off the shelf tech solutions will fall short of your needs. So when you have all of these solutions coming at you, look for openness and flexibility. Don't lock yourself into something that will not allow you to connect to other platforms or other solutions. And the one example that I give you uh, here is HSBC, where they needed to improve the customer conversations in their call center. 
it's unlikely that off the shelf solutions would work here. And they also may need to upgrade in the future. So finding an open, flexible solution was the right one. Let's look at the last one, collaboration and productivity. Looking for tech that will facilitate these are immensely important. We heard about this just a bit earlier. Businesses have had to switch to remote working in the last year, and many are considering, Google included, a permanent hybrid workplace model. And with enterprise workspace solutions, employees can work from anywhere. They can maximize their time and remain connected with other employees as well as connected to customers. So in this need to accelerate, continue looking for intelligent tech that allows you to make the most of your first party data. That was the first. The second is to look for tech that will allow you to remain open and flexible, not lock you in. And third, look for technology that will help you facilitate collaboration, creativity, and productivity. Let's go to the last piece, next slide. And that is that digital transformation is for everyone. I recall early conversations that I was having uh, with hoteliers back in the United States a number of years ago. Hotel companies, big chains, often felt that they didn't need to move terribly fast in order to digitize because they didn't see other hotel chains or other hotel brands doing so. It was the same conversation with retailers. Many of them felt that big box or physical retail uh, stores were not digitizing and they could and should instead focus on their in-store experience. They have all learned, and unfortunately some of them learned too late, that the competitor had actually changed. A hotel brand is not competing with just a hotelier and a physical retail store is not competing with just a retailer. We are all competing with, back then, the Ubers of the world. Users are and have come to expect a seamless digital experience or a hybrid experience. So if you're a hotelier, you're competing against that experience that one company affords them. If you're an employer, you are competing for talent that another company may provide an employee that you haven't because you haven't uh, yet adopted tech. So digital transformation is for everyone, for all industries. If we take a look at the next slide, I'm gonna come back to Google if I may. Uh, we are a tech company, but we're not spared. So for example, if you look at the far left here, we have had to transform our search results strategy over time. And that is because we needed to meet the changing customer expectations. We have to deliver answers. We can't deliver just blue links. If you look at the middle, when the pandemic hit, we had to change and revamp what it is that we offered in terms of answers, including credible data from the World Health Organization, or today, where can you get vaccines? And then to the far right, we know, coming back to the points that have been made, that we have an important role to play in the economic recovery in Singapore. That's crucial. Uh, it includes skilling and reskilling of Singaporeans empowering Singaporeans today for tomorrow. So in addition to that incredible list of, of resources available to you, add on by searching Singapore Skills Ignition Program or Singapore uh, Leadership Academy in partnership with Singapore government, IMDA, we're trying to do our part with the skilling as well. And if we go to the next slide, one more thing um, in this area is that the future of work is going to look different, as I mentioned, pre-pandemic. And at Google, we're testing lots of innovations because I come back to, it's not just about competition from the customer because the customer is going to judge our companies by their best digital experience, regardless of the space that that experience is in. And our employees are gonna judge us the same in terms of the employee experience. What is the innovation that we're bringing, the productivity that we're bringing to them through technology, the collaboration that we're bringing through technology? So 
So let me wrap up on the last slide with the decisions that we make today will determine how we recover and rebuild as companies and as business leaders as well. The world has changed. Digital and tech should be at the heart of our decisions. The reason is that tech offers new opportunities, opportunities to stay competitive, to increase productivity, and to strengthen operational excellence. We need to move fast. We need to prioritize intelligent tech that can turn data into insights. We need to prioritize tech that will allow you to remain open and flexible and prioritize tech that allows for collaboration and productivity. And this call again is necessary. Digitization is necessary for everyone, all businesses, not just a few. So thank you so much. And back over to you, Andrew. Thank you, Stephanie. I think it's a wonderful insight. I think you are rightly say that uh, the decision we make today is very important because it will affect our survival, our business survival. And uh, going digital, going tech is really the right way to go. Now, we do have some questions, but maybe, uh, and we probably have another five, 10 minutes uh, for Q&A. But first, maybe I'd like to pose a question to Yang, right? I think the Singapore government has been fantastic, you know, providing a lot of scheme grants to really help the company, the SME to grow, especially uh, to venture out to digitize, right? But there's many agencies providing all these services. We have IMDA, you know, we have uh, um, uh, Enterprise Singapore, EDB, you know. but is there a way to really to put all these things into one single shop where you can look at everything and uh, when people don't have to you know, crawl from one website to another website, from one scheme to another scheme. So is, is there something on the pipeline for this? Um, well, I think on the, what I understand on the government side, there's some kind of try and put all this into a grant portal, bring together more of these things. But I think beyond what the, the grant portal is, uh, I think that's where trade association and chambers uh, uh, can, can play a role uh, in helping our members, in helping companies to understand and to you know, move across all of uh, these different schemes. Uh, so there are some of these efforts. Uh, there are SME centers uh, that can help with some of these, but I think that there is more that we can do to be able to shift more from having looking at it as lots of uh, individual schemes towards uh, looking at it more from the company's needs uh, and starting from the company's needs. Uh, but that's a bit more high touch. So we do need more partners to work together with us in order to be able to help more companies. Oh, sorry, I, I, I need to unmute. I, I think thanks for the question. Uh, thanks for the answer. I think it's really good to have a single source that we can put all the scheme and grants together so that we can really uh, look at all those that can help the SME, right? Uh, Stephanie, we actually have two, two questions from you, uh, in fact, three. <laughs> so maybe first question, I, I, I don't think it's a question, but I think just uh, to seek your view, right? So things like data privacy, uh, the protections and sovereignties and uh, country special regulations and legal and security, these are some of the challenge, uh, business challenges. Maybe perhaps you have some views and, and how to overcome some of these challenges, right? Mm. Hi, Annie. Thank you so much. Uh, it's it's a incredibly you know valid uh, insight, uh, and uh, there is perhaps not a direct question, but we'll share share my thoughts. I, I'm in concurrence with what you have outlined uh, here, and if I may just uh, uh, share Google's perspective, uh, data privacy uh, and protection are absolutely important. They are. Uh, tend amount to anything um, that Google does today, but that has always been the case. Data privacy and security has always been first. But what is viewed as uh, private uh, today is not necessarily the same as how it was viewed a couple of years ago. And that is a reason, as an example, that we have announced we will no longer use cookies uh, come 2022 uh, in, in our services that we offer. So we will continue to keep uh, data privacy central, recognizing how it, what is data privacy is changed. We will change with that. 
Um, but on the second part of your statement, uh, yes, data sovereignty and country specific regulations do pose challenges. Have an immense amount of uh, you know, respect uh, for the intent uh, behind the wish for data sovereignty. But if we think about cloud technology and how it works best, it is not when you localize data in each and every market and each and every market having a different regulation. And Singapore has, has been a, a, a great proponent of this on an ASEAN basis, is how do we keep uh, data private, safe, and secure? That's, that's goal number one. But have uh, governments recognize that free flow data across border is safe, is private, and secure, and is actually advantageous to the customer and quite frankly, to governments and economies as, as well. Uh, but it is a challenge, uh, but one that we're, we're trying to stay close to and productively work uh, with government agencies on. I think you're on mute again, Andrew. Would you like me to take the second question? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Good. Uh, so Manas, thank you also uh, for your question. Do you think the growing trend of digital transformation with open source technologies will disrupt the cloud AI ML technical solution? Uh, look, I, I, I'm here as an SCS member, so I, I am bringing up Google uh, again. Um, I, I apologize for that, but please recognize uh, that is the point of view that I'm closer to. Um, but we do believe in open source technology and, and you may be familiar with the principles around Kubernetes um, on our cloud platform that we believe uh, plugging into different uh, solutions and cloud, different cloud platforms working together can again come back to that custom need that a company uh, or industry may need. So open source, uh, we believe, is the right route. It allows for that um, openness and flexibility that I pointed to uh, earlier. Will it be disruptive in some cases? Uh, yes, but again, not locking yourself in to just one platform or to one solution or to a solution that won't talk to others, I think can limit uh, businesses. And the last... Um, question uh, posed anonymously. Uh, as, as big tech, what is Google doing to help SMEs along the digitization uh, journey in Singapore? Uh, yeah, big tech, um, I recognize uh, the, the, the cloud that could potentially uh, come with that and may be alluded to in, in your question here, uh, but our focus is to be helpful to be helpful to all of our users in Singapore. And with my hat on here in, in Singapore, I'm thinking locally, our entire team is, and also of course thinking around the region. So we look at what's needed uh, in Singapore, and again, myself to Southeast Asia, and deploy the solutions, global solutions that can be customized locally, because we believe that technology, again, on these big platforms, is the best technology, but best when it's deployed locally in an open and flexible way. And for SMEs specifically, we've always known and felt that you know, SMEs is the backbone of, of Southeast Asia, generally speaking, but also true uh, in Singapore uh, as well, both in terms of employment, GDP, et cetera. So we've been focused on for many years helping SMEs, but we've ramped that up. Uh, in the past year uh, due to COVID. Uh, so again, I mentioned uh, SME Leadership Academy, again, in partnership with government agencies as well as UOB Bank. This is, uh, again, end-to-end -end for leaders. How do you think about and deploy technology within your SME? Uh, it was previously a mix of, of online and in-person. It's, it's now online course, uh, but it covers a lot of different aspects of tech. Uh, we've also launched the SG, SG Skills Ignition Program, where we're taking uh, not just new grads from university, but also those who may be mid-career and working to skill in the new grad uh, instance through on-the-job training and reskill those who may be mid-career through online training to prepare them uh, for a role in tech. 
and we remain committed uh, in this space. Again, empowering Singaporeans for tomorrow uh, is our goal and super leaned in and care about an awful lot about this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, I, I just want to pose one question to uh, Yang and maybe another question to Hyoksin. Uh, first, maybe uh, Yang, uh, I just want to, I uh, mean, putting aside uh, COVID-19, why, why is it that the adoption for digitization is uh, slow in Singapore? And what, what do you think are the one that holding back the SME? And what does it take to have one small little step towards digitization for the SME? What does it take? I think in terms of what it takes, uh, a planning platform like COVID helped a lot, uh, where it really pushed people to say, we must do it in order to survive. Uh, I think it's, it's probably a combination of, in the past, a combination of inertia. Uh, there's so many things that our SMEs worry about that if the SME bosses need to think about, worry about that uh, they may not think further long term enough about the digitization part. Uh, the lack of expertise is another factor. If they don't have the right people, the right expertise, it then became, uh, it becomes not something that's of priority for them. So I think uh, to, uh, the good thing about, uh, about the current state is that COVID has given the push. So they are now willing. Uh, what we need to help them is to be the able part. Right? So because we need them to be both willing and able. Uh, so that's where I think uh, we can work together and, uh, and uh, help to build up the capability. And I saw in the Q&A, there's a, a, a question or comment about the SDS members retire from workplace, whether there's an opportunity to leverage on them to help SMEs. I think this is a, a, a very good point. And I think it's a great opportunity uh, that those who may have uh, taken a step back from uh, active day-to-day -day work, but still want to uh, use their expertise to help. I think this is a very good pool that could potentially help our SMEs, maybe as mentors, as advisors, to help our SMEs to think through what are their needs and how they can better adopt digitalization solutions. Thanks, thanks. I think, Yang, I think uh, also good to know that uh, while COVID-19 bring us a lot of distress, it also bring us a transformation in the way we, we bring about our business. Maybe I, I, I go over to Yoxin and maybe you can share your thoughts about uh, how, how to make use of the vast uh, pool of talents that we have in SCS and help some of these SME to go uh, digital. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. I think um, you've like taken the um, words out of my mouth, right? So the answer is yes, I'd like to actually respond uh, very positively to Yi Yang, right, about SES working together with SBF. In fact, we, we had been talking internally when, when the CTO program came out and the DLP program came out, the Digital Leaders program as well, that we are trying to organize within ourselves, you know, to actually support this uh, program, right, and uh, we'd be happy to work with uh, SBF. And, and really, you know, within SES, just, just for me to explain, have the opportunity to explain a little bit about what we do like, as senior members within SES, we are career mentors. So um, there are about nearly 250 of us, right, who actually mentor the, the younger ones, right, in terms of their career aspiration, how to write resumes and how to move. And, and through that mentoring, right, we actually kind of also mentor beyond just uh, careers, right, we mentor about um, the tech itself. You know, uh, based on the learnings that we had over the years, you know, what works, what doesn't work, etc. And the good thing is that it also keeps the seniors uh, vibrant, right, and updated because then they work with the younger folks too to know what is, uh, you know, the stacking and all the, all the new tech that is in the field now, right? So they feel connected too. So this is a valuable source of uh, resource, you know, I feel, and it ideally fits into the CTO program, you know, for uh, SMEs, you know, to help SMEs, you know, um, wade through all the various schemes that's available, pick the right one that is applicable to the firm and have an understanding of the firm because they've been working like 30, 40 years of their lives, understanding customer requirements from both ends, right? Some are vendors and some have been both vendors as well as users and they understand definitely about, you know, governance and, uh, and can carry it through, like, right through to the whole SME uh, operation, you know, from planning to execution, as well as to governance, you know, for the SMEs. So I think, I think from that aspect, um, you know, I think there's val it's an invaluable source of pool of resource uh, that you can get from uh, SES and we're happy to actually work with all the different um, associations here 
as well as SBF for sure. So I, I wrote a note to you already, Yiyang, that will follow through. Thanks. Thank okay, thanks. You to, to thanks. Yeah, I, I know I'm sitting between you and lunch, and uh, I hope we got more time, but we already overrun our time. Uh, first, I think I want to thank uh, uh, Yoxin and also our two uh, speakers, Yiyang and Stephanie, for sharing these uh, wonderful insights about digitization. I, I hope after hearing from them, we give you the, the spur to, to really go forward and digitize, go digital, right? And um, if you need to you need to have more information, do, do reach out to SES website. We run webinars every couple of days. So I think there's a lot of things that we can do together. So I think uh, thanks uh, the three uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen for spending time today. And also thanks to all our TAC that come for these sessions. I hope you have benefited from, from this sharing. So thank you very much.